everyone, Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my Tag It Tuesday for March. Tag It Tuesday is a Facebook group, and it has a challenge every month, and I showed the challenge at the beginning. There's four prompts, and so I'm starting with this tag that I had left over from when we did resist techniques. Um, I'll link the video where where I made 20 cards out of the 19 different resist techniques that uh, we did on the live show and then I made a speed up so that you can see all the finished cards and this tag was left over from that I didn't use the two tags that I made uh, testing out household products as resist this one I showed you at the beginning was mentholatum, mentholatum ointment which is a Vaseline based ointment um, I was looking for Vaseline, which was what I was going to try, but I didn't have any, so I used that instead. And um, then I sprayed it with some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. So I wanted to stick with the same colors on the tag. So I got out uh, this sponge brush, which is the mini ink tool, mini ink blending tool from Ranger. And then similar colors of Distress Oxide inks. Um, you know, those just dress oxide inks. I picked out some colors that were similar to the mists I had used in the background just to kind of tighten up the whole look of the gears. The stencil that I had used was a gear stencil and it just wasn't showing as gears that much. So I wanted to kind of improve the background of my tag. So I used the three colors, walnut stain, um, honey, wild honey, and peeled paint I think and I used those in the background and then I ended up using them in the foreground as well the first the first prompt was use a sponge brush so I did took care of that then the second prompt was to add gears and so I'm kind of adding more gears and putting some over the top and layering and then adding these crackle and dot stencil type things over the top just to try to fill in the background and make it look complete I still have resist on there because even though that resist stuff, the mentholatum is dried on there and you can't smell it anymore, it still is resisting the ink. I did a little bit of water splatter technique just to get some lighter colors on there and then I gave it a good dry and I'm pretty happy with my background at this point. So the third prompt was to use a black marker and I thought, what would I want to use? Should I draw something? I probably should draw something. but. I just didn't know what to draw, so I decided to go ahead and continue using this stencil, which is really more of a mask than a stencil. And the products, all the products I use are in the description box below, so you can find this when it's from the Crafters Workshop. And masks are kind of fun instead of stencils. A um, mask is where you're getting the, the negative space that was cut out of the stencil. Stencil has positive space with a negative hole, and then a mask has the negative space without the rest of it. And so I decided to use my Fabricastel Pit brush pen. Um, this is the bullet tip small size and I thought I will draw over some of the gears. So I drew over one of the gears and then I thought I don't really need to have them in the order that they are. I just need to have some gears in my foreground that are on top of my background. These are now my focal images. And so I used the different three different size ones with different teeth and then I made them look as if they're kind of grinding together as if they're working together. Because at this point I came up with what I what this tag was about, which is because the fourth prompt, which you'll see later, uh, is luck. And of course tomorrow is, is St. Patrick's Day. So for those of you who celebrate, happy St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to wear your green or you're going to get pinched. No, one of you wants to get pinched. I don't want to get pinched. <laughs> so once I had drawn with my black marker, my little gears working together, then I wanted to make them stand out from the background. And so a way to do that is to add a dark shadow around your pieces so that they can look as if they're almost three dimensional, as if they're coming off the tag. And so I'm using my black Stabilo All pencil, which is a highly water reactive pencil, to draw around <coughs> excuse me, the gears. 
and then I'm blending that pencil out <clears throat> with my water tank brush and it really does make them look as if they are standing out from the background it, it they almost appear as though you could touch them and they would be dimensional but of course they're not it's just all an optical illusion <laughs> it's magic it's magic yeah it's art <laughs> so this adds a lot of black into my co uh, tag which i'm happy about this is a manila shipping tag um just a very standard shipping tag that you can buy on Amazon or wherever. I ha I at one point bought a thousand of them, so I have a lot of them. I use them for a lot of different things, tag books and things, but altered tags are a thing, and so that's what I'm making. So I just continue to um, darken in those areas, those holy areas right there, <laughs> and around the outside of the teeth adding the pencil, blending it. And as you can see, the resist under there is still resisting that. Even the pencil is still getting resisted. So using mentholatum or Vaseline as a resist works really well, I must say, with water soluble um, stuff, you know. So then I remembered that I had seen a quote and I couldn't think of what the quote it was. So I looked it up on my phone to find something of what I was thinking of. But it basically says that, that, you know, you might be lucky in your life and you might get some things by luck, but don't rely on luck because really what life is about is hard work and making your own luck. And so that's, that's the, I don't know if it's the exact quote that I've seen before. There were several on, on the internet. Uh, that said something like that, but I picked this one. Um, then I used my brother P Touch label maker to print it out. Um, that particular printer has five different size fonts, so I used the second to the largest one <clears throat> to print the little quote, and then I used the smallest one to print the name of the person who said it, which is Ian something Walker Smith. Ian, so anyway. <laughs> You'll see it when I put it on there. I can't remember now. It's not, I don't know who it is, but that's who was credited with the quote on the internet. So I'm going to credit them with the quote, whoever they might be. So I'm just uh, trimming those down with scissors and then using my um, X Acto knife to help me peel the background backing from them to make because they're sticky. It's like a sticky tape. And then I draw around them with my Posca pen just to make them stand out a little bit more from the background. Can we read that in some, I can't read it. Can't read it. Anyway, that's the guy who said it. So then I decided maybe I wanted a little bit of like metallic-y something on my tag because I like metallic-y stuff. So I got out this copper colored, uh, ink of gold and I put some of that on my gears with my finger and then I decided well I want some some splatters probably could have used the ink of gold for splatters too but I grabbed the PBO copper paint because it's a little bit brighter uh, more intense color and using a fan brush which is a really great thing to make splatters I just watered down the paint a little bit and splattered that copper over my entire tag and then wiped off the labels. So one thing that I like to do with my tags is to make them have a backing because I think it makes them, it makes them seem more finished and it makes them stand out more. But I realized after I cut my two backing pieces, which are a piece of copper cardstock and a piece of black cardstock, that uh, I had cut them too short. So I just peeled off the sticker um, of the guy's name at the bottom and trimmed the tag <laughs> rather than going and recutting all new pieces, which could have happened. Obviously my measuring was terrible because I did have to trim the sides too. Uh, I just did that with scissors because I was like, ah, this is so annoying. I already glued it on. And then, then the, the whole edges were not equal. They're fatter and skinnier and that bugs me. So I'm using Aileen's tacky glue to stick these two pieces together works really well to um, keep something like this together, especially because the, 
the manila tag was wanting to curl, so I needed something strong to make sure that everything stayed flat. And then I decided in honor of St. Patrick's Day that I really needed a clover, besides, you know, clovers represent, the four-leaf clover represents luck. So I grabbed this scrap of green cardstock, and I don't have a clover punch or a clover die, so I used a small heart, and I punched out four little hearts, and then made that into my clover. That's something you can always do if you have a heart stamp or a heart punch, you can make a clover. And then you don't have to own a clove or something, which is used so infrequently. <laughs> Unless you're really into Irish stuff. And then if you if you want a four-leaf clover, you can certainly own that. They are they are in existence. So then I glued down the little stem that I had created. I, I went around the edges of my little pieces with the ink of gold and my finger. And then I glued down all my pieces to make my clover. It didn't stand out very much from the background, but I knew I was going to put black on there with my Stabello All Pencil again. Blend that out to make it um, very much stand out from the background. And I also added in some little uh, details into the leaves in the area of the leaf that would be kind of folded in. And it's very clovery looking. You'd never know that it was originally some hearts. <laughs> So then just to make it a tiny bit better and seem like it's really on the top, I used a little bit of my white Posca pen. Um, I just squeezed it out onto my paper and picked it up with the water brush and added some watery highlights to the clover. And I think it looks nice. So then all I did after that was add some fibers, some organza ribbon, a piece, a scrap of grow grain ribbon, and a little bit of yarn that has some metallic-y stuff in it. And my tag was complete. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to um, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on that notification bell so that you can know that things are, are coming. And, of course, share this with people you think might like a tag with a four-leaf clover on it. And leave me a comment. Did I say that? I don't know. Anyway, all those things really help my channel grow. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.